Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Felicia Bukesins of Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry. Here I'm going to discuss five concepts concerning time which are directly connected to our deliverance and victory in our journey with the Lord. God has been so merciful to every human being by giving us 24 hours in a day. Whether somebody believes in him or not, everyone has 24 hours in a day. And in addition to that, God has given every human being the power of choice, the capacity to decide, the capacity to choose how they are going to use those 24 hours every single day. In the book of Proverbs 16 9, uh, verse 9, we see the, the Bible tells us that a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. That word deviseth, that word the heart deviseth is how somebody decides how they are going to go, what they are going to do. And it's only when someone and decides that I'm going to allow the Lord Jesus direct order my footsteps. This is how somebody can go forward in their journey with the Lord in victory. Or somebody deliverance can begin to come forth. You can look at another message that we spoke about directing God directing our steps, the Lord directing our steps at Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry YouTube. It says, I believe the, the title says, Lord, order my steps. Make sure you look for that message. Elder Sims uh, was teaching that message last Sunday. Now, many people fail to understand that the troubles that we get into the bondages that we get into with sin and addictions, they start in the decisions that we make. And it starts with the decision that we make concerning the choices that are available to us. The privilege of making a choice. Every second, every minute of every day. We are told in Ephesians 5 verse 15 and 16 that see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. See the word see, we are being told to take heed, pay attention, be careful. Now for somebody to walk, they have to decide, I'm going to take a step, I'm going to go over this way. I'm going to stay. I'm going to go that way. I'm going to do this. We have been told to walk, meaning to live, to behave as the wise. And we've also been told we are supposed to redeem the time. To redeem meaning to take good care of. Be careful with the time because these days are truly evil. We don't have to speak more on this because we know we live it every day. We need to remember also that every human being, when they wake up in the morning, they make a decision what they're going to start with, how they're going to start their day. Somebody will might say, okay, I'm first going to clean up and how they're going, they're going to take a shower. They're going to just wash. They decide they're going to brush their teeth or whichever. Some decide I'm going to start my day with prayer. And some say, I'm too busy. I can't pray. I don't have enough quiet time. Some decide I'm going to just focus on the world. I'm going to just try and get a verse or two in. I'm going to read a chapter or read even one verse. And some decide not to do that. Remember, that's the power of a choice. How we decide to use our time. On the same token, when somebody is being tempted in a trial, it always, almost always begins in the mind. And from that seed of that thought, 
the person makes a decision. You see, all this happens so fast. And sometimes it happens so, so fast or so automatically, we don't even notice it. You might think, oh, how about when somebody, maybe they see something or they hear something. Remember, whatever we see, for example, let's say we see a woman passing by and they are not dressed decently. Or we hear something that is not holy, that's not uh, pleasing unto the Lord. Like that is, you know, it's not good for our spirit. Just that first encounter is not necessarily a sin unless, let's say your body reacts to it. You, 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 you dwell on it. Then it's something that you need to repent. You need to repent and move on. Don't even think about it. Remember, there are those that have grown in their walk with the Lord so much that they will see something like that and not even give a second thought. Just keep on moving. It will be like they didn't see anything. They didn't hear anything. They've trained their mind to be focused and be held fast, be controlled by the Holy Spirit so much. It doesn't even bother them. It doesn't affect them at all. Now, we need to focus our mind on the Lord Jesus and his word. The word that is giving us life, eternal life. Keep our mind on Christ. We need to find, we always uh, encourage people to find a verse. Find a verse of the day that you can meditate on. And if possible, if you can memorize it, it's even better. Because scripture is like ammunition for your soul, for your spirit. When it comes a time you cannot open your Bible, you have the verse. When you are talking to someone, you're ministering to someone, when you're praying, you, if you have enough verses in your spirit, they come in handy, they come in very valuable. Remember, we've been told to flee from the devil. Flee, and he will, you know, resist the devil, and he will flee. Having verses in your mind, in your spirit, is a way for you to resist the devil because he's coming at us every single day using various ways, various means. And it's going to get worse and worse. Not to scare us, but to equip us, to make us alert. And if you practice what I have said so far, what I've discussed with you so far, up to now, you will notice, especially the one that's keeping scripture in your mind, you will notice that those uh, sins that used to bind you, things that, you know, you use trials that used to take up your time and take up your energy so much. They'll start falling off. They'll start falling away. They won't have so much as much power as they used to. Now there are those. Uh, now for someone who does not understand how just your eyes can cause you to sin. And they continue, let's say somebody encounters this temptation. They see something that should not be, they keep it in their mind. They decide to keep, they're not aware how long they're keeping it in their mind. They keep turning, oh, how could, you know, even believers fall into this trap. They look at something and they say, how could they do this? Look at how they, that's contemplating, that's meditating on it. Don't give the devil, I always say, your brain cell. Is it valuable? I mean, your brain real estate is very valuable. Don't just allow anything on there. You will find that as you're meditating, you are thinking, meditating on something that should not be. God is not using you at that time. The Holy Spirit is not ministering to you at that time. We know it is sin. Leave it alone. Let it be. We know Recently, I, I was prompted to research more into uh, those that have testimonies of being having a near life and death experience, like their spirit is lifting up from their body. Maybe they are sick or they're in the hospital or they're in surgery or something like that. And uh, they, 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 they lift up and they could see their body laying on the ground from different parts of the world. I, I really encourage you to make the time and do that research. Go on YouTube and look. People from Europe, Africa, South America, Asia, they will tell you similar things about hell and heaven. Hell is real, heaven is real. And one, uh, two, at least two people 
they at least one that i remember clearly he went into very detail because he was taken up uh I will I will translate that testimony in English because in there this person uh, this man of God was taken up uh, to heaven for about 351 days different days he will see a vision and dreams but the long story short is he found some people over there in hell because of just their thoughts and he could see the torment part of the torment they were experiencing their heads kept swelling remember that somebody's burning eternal burning torture and their head is just swelling it is terrible don't play with thoughts that do not belong to the lord that's what i'm trying to say okay we are still talking about how to use the time the time that we have for our deliverance for our victory in our life with Jesus okay so if you are careful in these areas okay you will find see victory in terms of things that are binding you in terms of worries that are taking up your time in terms of your work with the Lord let's say you are a new believer okay this is something that you want to understand Philippians 4 8 tells us that finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things that verse right there summarizes everything that i was just talking about make sure yes you we will see bad news yes we will hear bad news we hear bad news we pray we hear an ambulance going down the street we pray for the person we hear bad news for our family members and our loved ones we pray we say words of encouragement it's good to pay attention those of us who don't uh, listen to the news enough we need to listen to the news in a balanced way and know what's going on around us. As believers, as saints, we need to know what times we are living in, what's going on around us. What do we pray about? But do it in a balanced way. After you hear what's going on, continue in your walk with the Lord. Continue serving God. Continue meditating on the Word. Okay? Now, one of the ways that you can do this using your time effectively is to build a, 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 a habit build a routine that in the morning you are starting your day with the Lord every morning decide make up in your mind I am going to start my day speaking to the Lord in prayer I'm going to put at least one verse in my mind some are busy in the morning you're driving to work that's time for you to pray and listen to scripture follow somebody that prays in the morning find a way to start your day with the lord you are walking in your office your place of work walk in praying you don't know what's waiting for you that day ask god to give you wisdom to give you patience to give you favor to help you to be faithful Thank him for that job. Thank you for the day. Hallelujah. I'll speak more about this uh, later. You can use scripture. For example, Psalm 63 verse 1 to 4, which tells us, which says that, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth, I for, start, thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory so as i have seen thee in the sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee thus will i bless thee while i live i will lift up my hands in thy name that's one of the verses you can use in the morning so if you get to a point that you have memorized it you wake up saying it in your spirit, saying it in your heart, okay? Or you can also use Ephesians 
6 verse 10 to 18, which reads thus, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching where they are unto with all perseverance, pers perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's another verse that you can use. And you will see as your day go by and you continue and you continue, it's not perfect, but it's just the effort some days you might be busy you might miss you might forget i don't know depends on how serious you are with the lord you will see that your deliverance is coming forth you will see victory in your life with the lord you will see your walk with the lord is becoming stronger you getting closer to the lord and the holy spirit we continue to minister you in a most intimate way will start speaking to you they will start you to use you now, for those that uh, maybe they are not used to, let's say, prayer or praying, you are a new believer, look through Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry channel, look at other channels on YouTube, somebody praying in the morning, okay, command your morning or whichever it is, and you can start with those videos and you can find your own way. The goal is, I pray that you find your own unique way that you can start your day with the Lord and pray in the morning and meditate on the word. Now, I'm going to speak to some, another aspect that is very key, very important here on starting your day with the Lord. There are those who understand spiritual warfare. There are those that understand the power of prayer, intercession. They don't start their day in the morning only they start their day between midnight and 4 a.m. They've made up in their mind because of what they've gone through, because of what they understand. They start those times. It doesn't mean that you should start and start praying loudly. No, you live with other people. You need to be considerate. Get up. If you're sleepy, you cannot pray. You can, maybe don't, don't, don't cover yourself in the blankets and pray. You will fall asleep. You can get up and sit up. And in your heart, in your spirit, in a whisper, start talking to the Lord. If you're married, tell your spouse, honey, I'm going to just start, you know, getting up between midnight and 4 a.m. If you see me sitting up, I'm okay. I'm just talking to the Lord on our behalf. I'm sure your spouse will understand. Will understand. They will have no problem with that. Start to pray. Start to talk to the Lord. Start to cover people with the blood of Jesus. Cover the airways with the blood of Jesus. Cover your home with the blood of Jesus. Start speaking scripture. This is why you need to, you need to have word of the Lord in your heart and in your mind. Hallelujah. Those that live in areas that you understand there's witchcraft uh, activities going on, pray. Pray. So nobody knows. They can no, no, the devil knows they cannot come anybody near your dwelling or your loved one. Because you are a prayerful person. You are a prayerful believer. Hallelujah. Now, we'll talk about another point. Make sure that during the day, 
that your time is dedicating towards things of and thoughts of the word of the Lord and him have almost have a conversation with Jesus as you go about your business we have already be reviewed how thoughts the devil plants seeds of uh, a sin and and, 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 and and to trap us in all kind of addictions through our thoughts so have your thoughts directed towards the Lord unless you are working which you should be faithful in your job use your break times for your own personal things Christian stuff don't use work time witnessing don't use work time to do other things let's say you own a place of business hallelujah spend that time meditating on the word unless you are doing business or you're taking care of your family or things like that you direct your thoughts to the lord meditate on him ask him for advice ask him for direction ask the holy spirit to lead you and guide you okay that's another way that you can use your time well wisely towards your deliverance and your victory in your walk with the lord another point make yourself a schedule like make sure your day is filled with high quality prayer moments i know some people that put an alarm on their phones every three hours every four hours hallelujah they, they stop what they're doing and they pray even for five minutes they use their lunch break for prayer they use the 15 minute break for prayer they use their time that they are driving from point a to point b for prayer in the world they are finding scripture they are finding a sermon that they can listen to direct your day that way and if you are blessed that you have a time that you are free is for fasting and prayer do that maximize that time i know some people even have every two hours they say let's say they are going through a tough time in their life they have a loved one sick in the hospital they have a, somebody that needs deliverance in their family they have every two hours they pray and maybe it's a day of prayer and fasting they pray okay so you can use that way another this another way you can spend to uh, meditate on the word on the on the lord and be closer to the to the lord another point every day be careful and ask the lord to direct you give you opportunity to witness to witness in various ways okay you can speak to someone an encouraging word somebody's coming to you they're having problems somebody looks like their countenance is falling they are sad somebody tells you they have a sick family member just so stop and say you know what I, I, god will make a way for you just believe god he will make a way i'll pray for you and i'm if somebody needs prayer step aside take two minutes two seconds pray for them as your job allows it of course Remember, lunchtime, say, oh, can I meet with you lunchtime and we can pray together? You can do that. Or if they're too busy, just pray for them. Have so much word in your heart that you always have a good word for somebody. Okay. Another key method, everybody, almost everybody right now is on social media. WhatsApp, Facebook, Telegram, Instagram, whichever gram you use. Use your social media account. <clears throat> To share Jesus, to minister unto others, to encourage others, to bring people closer to the Lord. Okay? Let's say you, you, you don't want to be on social media. Awesome. Wonderful. Use your text messaging. You have a means to text people. Okay? Text somebody a verse of the day. Okay? In this area also, avoid, <laughs> this is for many people, especially believers, Many, they work with the enemy to spread things that do not edify anybody, things that do not help anybody to come closer to Christ, to stay away from sin or be saved. They spread around rumors, they spread around fear, they spread around room and gloom. If you see something is credible, pray about it and trust God to take care of it. If you feel like you need to alert people, then tell them, this is what we need to pray about today. Okay? But, Holy Spirit will lead each one of us in this area. Hallelujah. Matthew 
12 verse 36 to 37 we have been told this the verse the word say but as but i say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned i tell you for some reason my mind goes back to the testimony that i have heard this week of the man of god that was taken up different days it was almost uh, almost a year various times he was taken up because the lord gave him that assignment <clears throat> his assignment was to share this testimony with the people of god with the world that people will understand they have no excuse when they end up in hell and suffer suffering and in turmoil they will be judged and one of the places this man of god went i will translate this in english in these coming days god help lord help me with that he was shown places that people were just they were saved they were believers filled with the holy ghost but they just didn't care what they speak they just spoke anyhow they lied all kind of things this is why when we pray every time this is why we repent it's because of that nobody can say oh i'm saved i have a ticket to heaven are you really sure it's better to be over careful than to be so confident that you find yourself in the last day <laughs> that you didn't make it everyone as i was doing my research in these testimonies of people that were taken up to be shown what heaven looks like what hell looks like from different parts of the world they all say some of them say many of them say a video you will get, just like get a review you will see it on a screen from the time you were, we are born everything we have done it will be judged by those things unless we have repented this is why every time you go before the lord to pray please repent it doesn't mean that you are less saved it doesn't mean that you're making excuse for sin you just want to make sure that you have nothing to hinder you and you find that all your time with the lord all the work you've done and you still didn't make it that's why there's a verse that says if you know i will find this verse and, and bring it and, and quote it to you the verse is first peter chapter 4 verse 18 it says and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the angoli and the sinner appear scarcely the righteous are believers saved believers scarcely you do not want to be one of those people that missed it so go live holy watch how you spend your time watch how you walk with the lord and every time you have a chance cleanse yourself cleanse your way cleanse your spirit cleanse your mind cleanse your heart repent just ask for ask for, for ask god there's somebody was saying there's asking for forgiveness and there's repentance and he he was saying that somebody was talking about this asking for forgiveness you ask people for forgiveness but we repent before the lord okay so do this pay attention to this be mindful of this knowing that there will be a day that will be asked the things that we share out there there are some groups that we belong to and you just sharing some things that you know they are not godly they are not glorifying god they are not edifying anybody please don't don't do it please use your time well it's better for you to find a scripture to encourage someone find somebody praying uh, uh, a sermon that the devil has really deceived believers and many have become so overconfident with themselves but little do they know some of us might not make it that's why for me whatever i know to do for the lord i am doing it whatever i know to say for the lord i'm saying it if i get an opportunity to translate a testimony i will do it because especially that testimony that I heard, I could see in there, I said, my goodness, many, many, many in the body of Christ might, might just not make it because of what these people were shown. 
and they came back to, to say it. So they don't end up in those places. So this testimony will come and I will, t I, I will, I will translate it for everybody. Now, I will finish by saying another way that you can make sure that your time is used well for the Lord. Learn, have a routine to end your day with the Lord. Learn to end your day with the Lord in prayer, in the afternoon, in the evening, whichever time that you know to, you can do this before you sleep. Remember, you're still going to get up in the middle of the night. If you ask the Holy Spirit, he will wake you up in your time. Most importantly, the people that are living in your home, even if you're not married, let's say you're living with someone uh, that is depending on you or some, have service. If you have a family, train your family to have evening devotion. Meaning, if somebody is in the, old enough to, to talk, you tell them today, I need you to tell us about this verse. You read it to them. If they cannot read, if the child, read it to them and tell them, tell us what we can learn from this verse. You will train, the Bible says, train your child early in the way of the Lord. That he might not depart from it. Everybody in your home should attend evening or afternoon devotions. Even if you are not home, let them know at this time, mama or papa said, we need to have devotion in our home. Teach your family to start prayer by repenting for anything that day that they have done in their thoughts, words, and actions. Hallelujah. Whether they remember or not, they start prayer with repentance. It paves the way for you to for your prayers not to be hindered, for the Lord to be able to hear you, for the enemy not to stand there and block your prayers. In 1 John verse 1, sorry, first, sorry, 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 tells us, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the verse right there. Nobody can say they are, they are saved, they are saints. Yes, we are going to heaven. Yes, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. But always cleanse your way because we were born and shaped in iniquity. And sometimes we see things that vex us. We look at something and we perceive it wrongly. We judge others. We don't complete our assignments on time. Holy Ghost will be talking to us to do something and we don't do it in a timely fashion or in the way that he wants us to do it. So don't be overconfident and at the end of the day, you find that you have missed it. Okay. Now, then teach your people or teach yourself, train yourself to thank God for his mercies for that day, for his protection, for uh, supplying all your needs. For allowing you to see that day, to being able to go to your, uh, handle your business and come home. For everybody in your uh, family members and your loved ones being safe. Even if you're going through difficult times for just seeing you that day up to that moment. Then you ask God for protection as you sleep. Cover the airways with the blood of Jesus. Refuse any demonic contamination in the dream. Some dreams are coming from the Lord. Some dreams come from us as humans. And some dreams come from the enemy. For example, some of these testimonies I hear over there in hell. People will be judged just from dreams. Just from you, you having uh, intimacy, sexual intimacy in the dream. They might use the face of your spouse. Wake up and refuse that in Jesus' name. That's how the enemy, people that get saved, I'm coming from, from uh, the continent where when people get saved and they used to practice witchcraft, they all, many of them say they use dreams. You dream that you're eating, it's not a good thing. Wake up and refuse that in Jesus' name. You dreaming that you have an intimacy, you dreaming that you're being attracted to someone, wake up and refuse it. So you pray before you sleep and say, Lord, protect me. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Protect me from demonic contamination as I sleep in my dream in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your children might not tell you, but your child might be uh, 
dreaming things they are taken up uh, up there they are there's a child I used to know he was testifying that when he was young he used to dream that he was flying up in the air he wasn't saved then he could see people in his home sleeping and I said goodness you could have he didn't know to tell his parents at that time and that that young man is going through difficult time right now Diff he is far from the Lord because his parents did not know his parents were not saved at that time he said he will fly up in the air and he will have people I think it came from cartoons and all this kind of contamination that our children go through he was he was fighting in the air uh, super I mean all kind of stuff that should not be that's beside the topic we're talking about time prayer in the afternoon in the evening before we sleep you can use uh, verses like Psalm 91 verse 1 to 16 or you can use some or the entire Psalm 91 or you can use Psalm 42 verse 8 which says yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life and your day with the Lord their ways this is just some of the ways that we can use time to our advantage. We can redeem the time for our deliverance, for our spiritual breakthrough, for our breakthrough of any type, shape, and form, for God to walk in our lives. The Lord has given us everything that we need to be victorious believers in Jesus Christ. So this is just one of the ways that we can use time wisely to our advantage and make it to heaven. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I am Felicia Buki Sims, Evangelist Felicia Buki Sims of Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry. You can follow us on Facebook, Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry. You can go on our website, Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry.org. You can follow my husband, Elder Cosmin E. Sims on Facebook. His Facebook is like a Christian television channel, anything to encourage you, anything to build you up, anything to make your day is on there. You will be victorious depending on how serious you are with the Lord. So let us learn to redeem the time for these days are evil. God bless you and see you on another message. Bye-bye.